All rise. Department 24 of the Superior Court of California in and for the County of Sacramento is in session. The Honorable Michael Bowman, Judge Presiding. Please be seated and come to order. All right, thank you. Uh, I am Judge Michael Bowman, a Judge of Superior Court here in Sacramento. Welcome to Department 24. Uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and need social distancing, this matter is being heard remotely. That's to accommodate the public's right, as well as the victim's right, the victim's family's right to be present. The court has uh, granted access to the press as well, and this matter is being live streamed. Uh, we have taken the temperature of all individuals uh, present. I'm asking all individuals to wear their masks, uh, with the exception of the attorneys while speaking on the record. Uh, I will wear my mask unless I'm speaking on the record. Uh, this is an effort to assist the court reporter to make sure we have a complete and clear record. I would also remind everybody we're still in court, so no talking in the audience, no recording, uh, no videotaping unless uh, previously authorized by court. We'll be taking a break at approximately 10.45 for 30 minutes. Let's proceed. I'm calling the case People's State of California versus Joseph James D'Angelo, case 19, excuse me, 18 FE 008017. Joseph James D'Angelo, is that your true and correct name, sir? Is that your true name, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Can I have the uh, attorney state their names for the record, please, starting with the defense? Alice Michael on behalf of Mr. D'Angelo. Thank you. Joe Chris representing Mr. D'Angelo. Thank you. Diane Howard on behalf of Mr. D'Angelo. All right, thank you. Can I have, uh, please, the elected uh, prosecutors from each county please stand and identify themselves? Good morning, Your Honor. Anne Marie Schubert, Sacramento County District Attorney. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Greg Totten, Ventura County District Attorney. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Joyce Dudley, Santa Barbara County's District Attorney. Thank you. Good morning. Dinah Becton, Contra Costa County District Attorney. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Testing. Good morning, Your Honor. Todd Spitzer, District Attorney, Orange County. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Tori River Salazar on behalf of the people of San Joaquin County. Thank you. Good morning. Jeff Reisig, Yolo County District Attorney. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Nancy O'Malley, Alameda County District Attorney. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Tim Ward, Tulare County District Attorney. The uh, attorneys, uh, the prosecution team that's going to be speaking on the record as well, please introduce themselves. Good morning, Your Honor. Dave Alavezos, Assistant District Attorney, Tulare County, for the people. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Deborah Lloyd, Assistant District Attorney for the County of Orange, for the people of the state of California. Good morning, Good morning Your Honor. Amy Holliday, Assistant Chief Deputy District Attorney from Sacramento County, on behalf of the people. 
Good morning, Your Honor. Tin Vu Ho, Assistant Chief, District Attorney, Sacramento County, on behalf of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Kelly Duncan, Chief Deputy, District Attorney, Santa Barbara County, for the people of the state of California. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Cheryl Temple, Chief Assistant, Dist District Attorney, for the County of Ventura, for the people of the state of California. Good morning, Your Honor. Venus Johnson, Chief Assistant District Attorney for the County of Contra Costa on behalf of the people of the state of California. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Todd Spitzer, District Attorney, Orange County on behalf of the people of Orange County and the people of the state of California. Thank you, sir. My understanding there's a change of plea and disposition in this matter. My understanding is Deputy District Attorney Amy Holliday, would you please state the terms of the proposed agreement, the agreement upon the sentence that's agreed upon, as well as the people's recommendations? Good morning, Your Honor. Amy Holliday, Assistant Chief Deputy District Attorney for Sacramento County on behalf of the people of the state of California. It is our understanding that there will be a change of plea this morning. The terms of the proposed agreement and the agreed upon sentence are as follows. The defendant, Joseph D'Angelo, will enter a guilty plea to all charged counts and special circumstances, allegations, and enhancements. As to the murders, the defendant will plead guilty to 13 counts of first degree murder. He will say guilty to the charged offenses and I admit to the special circumstances, allegations, and enhancements. In regards to the uncharged acts, the defendant will make admissions to each incident alleged. The defendant will say, I admit to all the uncharged offenses that have been alleged. These uncharged offenses occurred in Sacramento, Yolo, San Joaquin, Stanislaus, Contra Costa, Alameda, and Santa Clara County. As a result of the defendant's admissions to these uncharged offenses, the above listed counties have agreed to abstain from charging the defendant with any offenses related to those specific incidents for which he admits responsibility. All victims and victims' family members of charged and uncharged offenses will be able to give victim impact statements at the judgment and sentencing without limitation to time or content. The people of the state of California are prepared to remove the penalty of death as an option based on the following reasons. The defendant has expressed a willingness to resolve the charges against him prior to proceeding with preliminary hearing and trial. The defendant is admitting wrongdoing at a relatively early stage of the legal proceedings. The defendant is admitting to all of the murders alleged against him as first degree murders. The defendant is admitting to all other charged crimes and uncharged crimes that can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt that are known at this time alleged against him. The wishes of the victims and their next of kin. In exchange for his guilty pleas and admissions, the defendant will be sentenced to state prison for life without parole pursuant to penal code 190 subsection A, 190.1, 190.2, and 190.3. In addition, he will be sentenced to 11 consecutive counts of life without possibility of parole with 15 concurrent life sentences with weapons allegations to run concurrent or consecutive by law. The defendant will hereby withdraw his pending motions as of today, June 29th, 2020. With approval from the court, both sides hereby waive referral of the matter to the probation department for a formal report pursuant to California penal code section 1203 subsection B subsection 4 and in its place request a penal code 1203C report. The defendant will be required to register as a sex offender for the remainder of his lifetime. The defendant will be prohibited from owning, purchasing, receiving, possessing, 
or having under his control any firearm for the rest of his life. The defendant shall pay all requisite fees, fines, and restitution, including restitution to the victims in an amount to be determined. The defendant will be ineligible to receive work time credit and shall submit blood and saliva samples, thumbprints, and palm prints pursuant to Penal Code Section 296. The defendant sh shall submit to a blood test for AIDS pursuant to Penal Code Section 1202.1. And finally, the defendant shall enter a waiver of all appellate rights. Thank you, Counsel. At this time, Your Honor, would you like the reasons for the disposition? Yes, please. Your Honor, the reason for the disposition is as follows. The defendant's known crimes stretch over a 10-year period from 1975 through 1986. His identity was not discovered until 2018, and he was subsequently arrested on April 24, 2018. Today, all of the crimes alleged are between 34 and 45 years old. During the time we have waited for the identity of this person who committed these crimes to be discovered, many of the victims, witnesses, and law enforcement personnel involved have passed away. Now, as we wait for the legal proceedings to move forward, many of the victims, witnesses, and law enforcement are in their 80s and 90s. Many of these people, all deeply affected by these crimes, may not be with us at the time of jury trial. The family members of the murder victims have waited for decades for justice for their loved ones. The sexual assault victims have waited decades for justice. The men whose wives or girlfriends were sexually assaulted have waited decades for justice. The final resolution of this case at this time will allow the remaining victims and family members of the victims to hear the defendant admit that he committed these acts and crimes and will allow them to be heard at the time of sentencing. The current state of the COVID-19 pandemic has also contributed to the reasons for this disposition. The preliminary hearing was scheduled to have started this past May. It had to be postponed because of court closures and the dangers of bringing elderly or high-risk individuals into the courtroom in a public setting. The pandemic has also caused the availability of courtrooms and jurors to be limited because of social distancing requirements. All of this has contributed to extending the timeline for the preliminary hearing and the jury trial and may further impact the availability of our victims and witnesses in the future. They deserve the opportunity, the victims and the next of kin, to be present when the verdicts are finally read. The time for justice stands in front of us now. In the interest of justice for the victims, the families and the communities which we serve, this place, this plea at this time is in the best interest of the people of the state of California. Thank you, Counsel. Defense counsel, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You waive a full reading of the charging document? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. D'Angelo, at any time during this hearing, if you do not understand uh, what is uh, taking place, or if you have any questions, please stop, and the court will either answer your questions, or I'll ask uh, counsel to answer any questions that you have. Uh, do you understand, sir? Yes. Thank you, sir. Do you understand, Mr. D'Angelo, that you'll be entering guilty pleas to 13 counts of murder in the first degree, admitting special circumstances, enhancements, as well as admitting to uncharged acts? Do you understand that, sir? Yes. It's anticipated that you will receive 11 consecutive life without the possibility of parole sentences with 15 concurrent life sentences. Additional time for weapon enhancements will be imposed as mandated by law. Do you understand that as well, sir? Yes. The aforementioned uncharged acts that you will be admitting to uh, having occurred in Sacramento County, Yolo County, San Joaquin County, Stanislaw County, Contra Costa County, Alameda County, and as well as Santa Clara County. As a result of these admissions to these uncharged acts, the, uh, the above listed counties have agreed to abstain from charging you with any offenses stemming from or related to those specific events for which you'll be admitting responsibility. 
all victims and victims' family members of the charge as well as the uncharged acts will be able to give a victim impact statement at judgment and sentencing without limitation as to time and without limitation as to content. At the time of judgment and sentence, you'll receive 11 consecutive life without the possibility parole sentences with 15 concurrent life sentences. Additional time, as stated, for the weapon enhancements will be imposed as mandated by law. You will not be considered for any other sentence. Do you understand, sir? Yes. In addition, you agree to withdraw all pending motion as to today's date, June 29th, 2020. As a condition of this plea, you will agree to waive any and all appellate rights. Uh, do you understand the terms of this plea, Mr. D'Angelo? Yes, Your Honor. Sir, so have you had enough time to speak to your attorneys and discuss this case and this plea, and as well as have all your uh, questions answered? Yes. Have you had time to speak to your attorneys about the elements of the charges against you, the possible defenses to those charges, and the consequences of this plea? Yes. Because this is a felony, this plea can be used against you in later civil proceedings as if you were found guilty after a jury trial. You cannot change your mind after I accept your pleas today. Do you understand, sir? Yes. Is that what you're prepared to do today, sir? Yes. Mr. D'Angelo, before I take your plea and admissions, the court must be satisfied that you understand the possible consequences of this plea of guilty as well as your admissions to any special circumstance, element uh, enhancement, excuse me, or uncharged acts. First, you are pleading to serious or violent felonies which are strikes under the California Three Strikes Law, which could result in an additional and separate life sentence for any new offense. You will be ordered to pay restitution to the victim or victim's family in an amount to be determined by the court, as well as any fees and fines as mandated by law. If you dispute the amount of restitution ordered, you may request a hearing. Any restitution requested by the victims will be submitted to the probation department to be directed to the counsel for prosecution, as well as Alice Michael and Joe Kress on behalf of the defense. You'll be required to register with law enforcement in any city or county in which you reside as a sex offender. That registration is a lifetime requirement pursuant to Penal Code Section 290. If you're not a citizen of the United States, this plea could result in deportation, exclusion from admission to the United States, or denied naturalization. A sample of your DNA, fingerprints, and palm prints will be taken and included in the California Department of Justice DNA database. You'll be prohibited from owning or possessing a firearm or ammunition for the rest of your life. And due to the nature of these charges, you'll be ineligible to receive work time credits. Do you understand, sir? Yes. And do you all further understand and agree that the court may consider any dismissed charges or admissions to any uncharged acts in deciding your sentence, including ordering restitution? Yes. RB waiver is entered. Do you understand the consequences of this plea as I've explained it so far, sir? Yes. This is a conditional plea that we're discussing today. That means that the sentence we're discussing today is proposed. Your case will be set for judgment and sentence at a future date. At that judgment and sentence hearing, the court's approval of the indicated sentence we're discussing today is not binding on the court. That means the court may withdraw its approval in light of further consideration. If this court withdraws its approval of today's plea agreement, you will be permitted to withdraw your guilty pleas if you desire to do so, and if so, this case will be rescheduled for a preliminary hearing. However, you will be bound by this plea today unless the court, after further consideration, rejects this plea agreement. In other words, you do not get to change your mind after I accept your plea. Do you understand, sir? Yes. Mr. D'Angelo, before I can accept your plea, and accept any admissions, it must be clear to the court that you understand and give up and waive certain rights. You do have a right to a preliminary hearing where the people are required to prove 
there's probable cause to believe a felony has been committed and that you are the person who committed it. You have the right to a speedy and public jury trial where the prosecution has the burden of proof of proving you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to a jury trial on the charges against you, including attached enhancements and including any special circumstance allegations. A jury is made up of 12 members of the community. Through your counsel, you would have the right to participate in jury selection. All 12 jurors must unanimously agree in order to render a verdict on the charges against you, including enhancements, also including any special circumstance allegations. If this matter were to go forward to jury trial, at the penalty phase, all jurors would have to agree unanimously, unanimously that you uh, agree to a sentence of death or life in prison without the possibility of parole. Do you understand the rights if I explain them so far, sir? Yes. Also at this preliminary hearing, and at your jury trial, including the penalty phase, you would have the right through your attorney to see, hear, and confront the witnesses against you, to have them testify under oath and have your attorneys question those witnesses against you. You have the right to present a defense, to present your own witnesses and evidence, the right to use the court's subpoena power to bring in witnesses on your behalf and to testify on your own behalf. You also have the right to remain silent and not to incriminate yourself. This means you have the right not to say anything against you. That includes pleading guilty to these charges. Mr. D'Angelo, do you have any uh, questions as to the rights you're giving up, including your right to a jury trial? No. Have you discussed these rights with your attorney? Yes. Do you understand that pleading guilty and making these admissions will be giving up all these rights? Yes. Is that what you wish to do? Yes. Do you understand and give up each of these rights, including your right to a jury trial? Yes. You also have a right to a jury trial on the same rights we just discussed on the special circumstance allegations. In other words, the people would be required to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you committed murder during the course of a rape in violation of Penal Code Section 190.2, Paren A, Paren 17, Paren 3, murder during the course of a burglary in violation of Penal Code Section 190.2, Paren A, Paren 17, Paren 7, and that you committed multiple murders a violation of Penal Code Section 190.3, Paren A, Paren 3. Do you understand and waive your right to a jury trial on the special circumstance allegations as well, sir? Yes. Mr. D'Angelo, you also have a right to appeal your case. And do you understand that unless you give up that right to an appeal, the law would permit you to appeal to a higher court following your plea of guilty in order to raise reasonable constitutional jurisdictional, or other grounds of the legality of the proceedings against you, or any ruling that's already been made in your case, or to challenge a search and seizure ruling made in a motion to suppress evidence, do you hereby waive your right to an appeal on this case, sir? Yes. Sir, has any promises been made to you that we've not stated here in open court? No. Has any member of your family or yourself been threatened or coerced in any way for you to enter this plea? No. Are you entering this plea in admission freely and voluntarily after fully discussing it with your attorney because it is what you want to do and you believe it is in your best interest? Yes. Are you at this time under the influence of any alcohol, drug, or medication that could affect your judgment or ability to enter this plea? No. Have you taken any medication, drugs, or pills, or alcohol in the last 24 hours? No. Counsel, have you discussed the consequences of this plea with Mr. D'Angelo, and are you satisfied that his plea is knowing, intelligent, voluntarily, and he is competent to enter this plea? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have you discussed the elements of the charges against your client, all the possible defenses to those charges, and the consequences of this plea? Yes, Your Honor. 
And do you feel he is competent to enter this plea? We do, Your Honor. And do you, do you consent to the entry of this plea? Yes, Your Honor. Are the terms of the plea, as I've explained them thus far, accurate? Yes, Your Honor. And do you join in the waivers, including the defendant's right to a preliminary hearing as well as trial, uh, right by a jury trial? Excuse me. We do, Your Honor. All right. Can the, uh, each attorney from each county, uh, could you please state whether or not you waive uh, your right to a preliminary hearing as well as your right to a jury trial? Starting with, let's start with the representatives from Tulare County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Thank you. Santa Barbara County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Ventura County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Contra Costa County. Yes, Your Honor. Orange County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Sacramento County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. San Joaquin County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Stanislaw County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Yolo County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Santa Clara County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. And Alameda County. Yes, we do, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. D'Angelo, do you have any questions before we proceed further? No. Thank you. Um, Deputy District Attorney Tin Ho, it's my understanding that the people wish to provide an uh, introductory uh, factual basis that applies to all counties? All right, this would be the time. The scope of Joseph D'Angelo's crime spree is simply staggering, encompassing 13 known murders and almost 50 rapes between 1975 and 1986. His monikers reflect the sweeping geographical impact of his crimes. The Visalia Ransacker, the East Area Rapist, the original Night Stalker, and the Golden State Killer. Each time he escaped, slipping away silently into the night, leaving communities terrified for years. For over 40 years, the biggest question remained unanswered. Who was the serial killer and rapist? Detectives from counties throughout the state poured endless resources into answering that one question. Even after retiring, detectives continued to investigate the case that haunted them. Generations of law enforcement never gave up, and neither did the prosecutors from those counties. In June of 2016, the Sacramento Sheriff's Department partnered with the FBI and other law enforcement agencies by offering a $50,000 reward for information leading to the identification of this person. This announcement came at a press conference held 40 years after the first known rape in Sacramento. Within months of that press conference, Sacramento District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert convened a meeting of all involved counties, including the elected district attorneys, asking each to dedicate more resources to answer that question. Those DA's offices responded, Ventura, <coughs> Orange, Santa Barbara, Tulare, Alameda, Contra Costa, Stanislaw, San Joaquin, Santa Clara, and Sacramento answered the call. In the fall of 2017, Contra Costa Assistant Chief Investigator Paul Holes asked District Attorney Schubert to assist in using a new DNA tool Investigative Genetic Genealogy, IgG, to possibly develop a lead in the case. Investigator Holes collaborated with the 